Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here. Today I thought we'd look at long lens tripod technique. I've had a lot of people comment or email me about this one, especially when they see videos with my hand on the lens, kind of wondering what I'm doing. So I thought it's about time I explain this method. Also, please note this technique is intended for lenses that mount to your tripod with an integrated foot. So things like large telephoto lenses, large zooms, super zooms, stuff like that. However, before we begin, I want to emphasize that the way I do it is not the only right way of handling a large lens on a tripod. I've worked with a lot of really great photographers, and some of them use techniques and setups different than what I'm about to describe. That said, the method I'm about to show you seems, at least for me, to work out the best overall. I've seen lots of other photographers using this method as well, including Moose Peterson, who I think might have been the one to come up with it in the first place. Now before we begin, let's quickly talk about tripods. In short, if you have a big lens, you want a sturdy tripod for it. I personally use a Gitsu 5 series and I highly recommend choosing legs of that caliber for mounting large telephoto lenses. For smaller lenses like super zooms or 300 millimeter glass, something equivalent to a 3 series Gitsu would work just fine. That said, you don't have to spend a thousand bucks on a set of legs, just you know, get something of good quality. After all, if you're going to put your gear on a shaky platform, there's no technique that's going to do you any good. Nothing's going to be able to save you from that. Next for the tripod head. When it comes to long lenses, I highly recommend using a gimbal head. I use a Wimberly head, and at the time I purchased it, they were one of the few companies who actually made such a head. However, as time has gone on, there are a lot of different options out there, so if you want a more affordable alternative, you can certainly find one with a little bit of research. However, I have to say, I really do like this Wimberly head a lot. Also, if you already have a really good quality ball head, you might want to consider the more affordable Wimberly Sidekick. Basically, you attach it to your ball head, and it allows it to work more or less like a gimbal head. In fact, this is a setup I like to use with my 80 to 400 millimeter lens, with my 3 series Gitsu, and my BH55 ball head. Not sure I'd be comfortable with it for huge primes, but for smaller stuff, it does work really well. Now, the reason for the gimbal head is simple. Once balanced and set up properly, it allows you effortless movement in any direction without the need to hang on to everything or lock or unlock knobs each time you make a move, you know, the way most other tripod heads tend to work. Additionally, it's designed so you don't have to lock it down when you use it, making tripod use much easier. Basically, just point the camera in the direction you want, shoot away, nothing to it. Now that's the background, so here's the technique. We'll start with the gimbal head, but I'll also show you how to modify this technique for use with a standard ball head afterwards. The first thing you want to do is loosen everything on your tripod head so the camera can move freely. Loosen every directional knob on the head as well as the tripod collar on your lens. Now, don't unscrew them or anything, just loosen it up to allow fluid movement. I know unlocking everything may seem contrary to what you've been taught about tripods, but for wildlife, you really do need the ability to move the camera. In fact, I think locking down the tripod is probably one of the reasons people don't like using a tripod for wildlife. It just makes it too frustrating. And while an unlocked tripod is maybe not quite as stable as a locked tripod, it's still far more stable than hand-holding a large, heavy telephoto lens. Next, place your hand on top of the lens with just a touch of pressure. You don't want to really push down hard, just apply a little more pressure than what your hand and your arm weigh. The idea here is that your hand and arm will help dampen some of the movement and vibration during shooting. It also seems to make it much easier to control where you're pointing the lens and helps keep things a little bit more steady in the wind. Plus, your fingers are now right near the focusing ring, so if you need to give the lens a little bit of help, you can. Next, push your eye to the viewfinder, or more precisely, your eye socket slash forehead. Some people use a lot of pressure here, some very little. I tend to use what I feel is moderate pressure, but I suppose it's all relative. So the key is to experiment with it and see what gives you the best results. When you're ready to shoot, gently roll your finger down on the shutter release and pop off a short burst. Shooting in short bursts on continuous high tends to give you more sharp images, since once the burst starts, the entire rig tends to stabilize. As for tripping the shutter, don't jab at the shutter release, do a kind of squeeze roll instead. Also, I normally have the release already half pressed and just a hair above tripping the shutter. Releasing the shutter smoothly like this can go a long way to getting sharper images, so definitely keep it in mind and be careful in this area. 
Finally, experiment with it in your backyard or home. To test yourself, turn off any stabilization and watch in the viewfinder to see just how steady you are. Maybe pop off a few shots and see how low you can actually go. Personally, as long as I can keep the rig steady at 1 60th or 1 25th of a second with my 600 millimeter, I'm pretty happy. Shutter speeds under 1 60th tend to be too slow to capture most wildlife anyway. Once you feel like you have the hang of it, turn your stabilization back on when you need it and your ability to keep things steady will be even better. Now, if you don't have a gimbal head, but you do have a ball head, you can use a similar technique. Start by mounting the camera and loosening the ball head, but leave just a touch of tension on it. You want to be able to move everything, but you don't want it sloppy. In fact, better ball heads will actually have a built-in tension adjustment you can use, so if you have one of those, definitely use it. The biggest difference with a ball head over a gimbal head is that you'll need to keep the lens's tripod collar locked down all the time or the entire rig will try to flop around on you. So if you need to turn from horizontal to vertical, make sure you lock down the ball head first, then loosen the tripod collar, then rotate the lens, then lock it back down, and then finally loosen the ball head again. One disadvantage to this ball head setup is that if you turn the camera in a new direction, you'll probably have to go through the lock and loosen routine each time to level things off. With a gimbal head, you can simply rotate the camera as you move side to side. As for technique for ball heads, you can use the same hand on the lens technique I mentioned before. Still, of course, keep your eye socket and forehead pressed to the camera just like before. Again, this method has worked really well for me. My advice is to give it a try, and if it works for you, great. If not, use whatever method gives you the highest number of sharp images. So that's it for today. The techniques in this video are explained in even more detail in my Secrets to Studying Wildlife Photography ebook, along with hundreds of other tips and tricks. It's 290 pages that are designed with just one thing in mind, showing you the easiest way to get amazing wildlife photos. It covers every aspect of wildlife photography, and I just know you're going to love it. And hey, don't take it from me. Check out all the testimonials from other photographers when you're over there. Finally, remember to sign up at my site for my free email newsletter so you never miss one of these video tips or articles on my site. And I'd also, of course, love it if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.